the waters around Chubke Resort and Marina are absolutely full of sea life. The water here is crystal clear and there are natural spectacles and new age adventures around every corner. Oh, fish on. Any moment now, you're going to drift into a lifestyle, a mindset, a journey. The destination is the thin space, where sky and water blend, where fantasy and adventure collide, and where the dream you follow is overtaken. We won't start without you on Discovering Water. Tyler's got a secret spot in mind for horse-eyed jacks. But first, he's got to leave Miami and make it across the Gulf Stream, a crossing never to be taken lightly. And don't get the idea that out of Miami happens quickly or easily. No longer the tropical, sleepy little village on the shores of Biscayne Bay, Miami is now a serious metropolis. Once across the stream and on the spot, it doesn't take very long for the crystalline Bahama waters to begin producing, just as predicted. All right, the anchor's solid. We are right on the mark. Let's go get them. All right, Mr. Plug, go do your thing. Down there, right where they live. That's there. Okay, come on. Oh, fish on. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> come here. Come here. Get out of that wreck. Oh. Come here. <laughs> got him. I got him turned. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. Every cast sent into these remote Bahama waters is like launching a probe straight into the wilderness. With the variety of habitats you can find here, the number of species present is astonishing. There are numerous shark species all kinds of groupers and snappers, and jacks like this giant horse-eye jack, just to name a few. With their large bulbous eyes and a row of sharp scoots leading back to their powerful forked yellow tail, these are fast, aggressive, and cunning reef predators not to be reckoned with if you're a small bait fish. The waters around here are not to be taken lightly either. Technically, this is the Bermuda Triangle. And no matter the size of the vessel, there is always a sigh of relief when you finally make it across the Gulf Stream and arrive in the tranquil waters of your Bahama Island destination. It's time to breathe deep and take it all in. Because we are on island time now. The island of Chubke Resort and Marina, that is. This classy home away from home is truly a tropical paradise. With all of the amenities here, its close proximity to Florida and relatively easy check-in process, it's the ideal home base after a Gulf Stream crossing. There is incredible biodiversity here. And with all of the fish species present, it's become a top destination for world-class fishermen like Cam Kirkconnell. There it is. Hey man, what's up? How much, how's it going? Awesome, dude, how are you? Good, dude, that boat is awesome. Isn't it sick? <laughs> it's a beast, we're gonna do some damage in it today. Nice. 
gonna take our weapons here. Good to see you. Good yeah. to see you, man. So uh, what's on the, the menu today, huh? Well, we've got pretty amazing reefs here. You know, throughout the Bahamas, it's sure. just awesome reefs. So where we're at today, there's a, there's a good high tide in right now. So okay. we're gonna start in shallow, hopefully get some uh, big lobsters, awesome. move out a little bit deeper, big hogs, move yes. out a little deeper, get yes. some uh, other big animals. So hopefully we see some big groupers, maybe some free swimming pelagic fish, but uh, yeah, it, it's the great thing about here is there's a chance at anything at any time, yeah, even in the shallows. Awesome, dude. Well, let's go get him, brother. Let's do it, brother. Let's it's a beautiful right. day. Yeah, let's roll. You'll love what's up next. Water has ever carried us across the farthest horizons, around the next bend, and down through the vast canyons and forests of exploration and adventure. Your spot on board is reserved. Take your best hold. The journey begins now. Discovering Water is brought to you by Gulfstream Yachts. So when we're diving today, biggest thing is just be patient. Like we're gonna get plenty of opportunities. The majority of these fish, like you get one really good shot at it though. So yeah. like if you go down, the hogs a lot of times will be going away from you like that. Yeah. Eventually they're gonna get curious and turn. Sure, sure. But they'll let you get right up to where you can almost touch them. Yeah. You know, so just keep enough distance. So you just wait for him to turn perfect. Make sure the pole spear is at least, you know, a foot and a half, two feet away. So it has enough like momentum to like actually punch him. Sure. And just wait for him to turn perfect and, and boom. And remember, you've got a float line. Right. So just you don't have to like skull drag him up every time. <laughs> it's so much safer. Yeah, yeah. So if you can just barely get him out of the rocks okay. and then you've got that float line, you can let the float line kind of out of your hands as you go up but you don't let him go down. Yeah, you're still kind of just pulling him a little bit. Okay, Why not? copy that. In free diving, preparation is key. It puts you in the right state of mind and your mental state becomes more and more important the deeper down you go. Sweet, bro. Let's go. Let's, Let's go get up. It's bugs. Out here, the fish are wild and plentiful. And something feels different. The sea creatures here are acting as they should, as they have for thousands of years. There's plenty of high quality habitat to explore. And there's a constant steady stream of crystal clear water flowing over the reefs from the depths of the Atlantic. When you put all those elements together, you can count on natural spectacles and surprises around every corner. While on the hunt, it pays to check out every little crack and crevice in the coral, because in the next cave, you might find exactly what you're looking for. This spiny lobster was so big and powerful that the first shot from a spear gun actually pulled out. Luckily, the second shot held true and persistence paid off. Now, all we need is some lemon juice, some warm butter, a little seasoning, and a nice hot fire to enjoy one of the Bahama Island's finest delicacies. That is a monster, bro. 
Look at the size of that thing, huh? <laughs> Woo! Woo! That is a beast, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Look at that. Monstrosity of a bug. And this is a big male. Yeah. When you look under the ledge, you can tell straight away because it's real long legs. Okay. And then once you have them up here, yeah. they have just the single fin here. They don't have like the, the double the, to hold the eggs, right? Exactly. Cool. And the last leg on a lobster's is the easiest way to tell. Yeah. It has a uh, another claw here. Like it has another split there okay. to like kind of tend the eggs. I got gotcha. you. So that's how you tell the female. Dude. Look at that thing, man. That's a monster. Beast. <laughs> that's what we came here for, brother. That yes. Thing's a monster. All right. Well, let's put her on our him on ice and uh yeah. what else does the Bahamas have? Let's go find I know the there's a lot more out here. Being able to spend one-on-one -on -one time above and below the water with Cameron is like taking a college postgraduate course. His clear, concise instruction with emphasis on safety is priceless, and the results speak for themselves. The moment Tyler submerges and leaves his everyday world, the pace slows, the light dapples, the cast of character changes, and with a kick of his swim fins, he glides into thin space, where time and air and water meld. A cosmic switch is thrown, and he becomes the predator that his forebearers were. spot we got dinner for the day and for everybody and that that's my boy right there Woo! big old hoggy that's awesome man so yeah you can tell the difference between the females and the males this is the big dominant male in the area you know he's got his hair of a females down there this big bug was just sitting down there in the hole huh oh so awesome so we saw these two females down there and sure enough there's a big stud male like they have their they yep. have their harem down there. Yeah, they're very territorial, and you know. We had a chance at him, and he kind of moved off, and he went into this same spot. Like, there's that guy one was. hole, and this guy was there. <laughs> all right, I know you know this area very well, man, and you take guided trips with people all over the place out here, so you've got a secret beach spot that we're going to go eat these things up, you know? Yeah. And we just got what we needed. These are the best eating creatures out here, so we're going to cook these up on your little secret spot. I'm stoked, bro. That's my biggest hogfish ever, man. Stud, dude. Oh, that was great. What a haul, huh? Such a Oh man, well done. you're the man, Cam. You! Woo! Collecting driftwood to build a fire, to cook the fish and lobsters that you personally harvested from the sea, is by definition living off the land. Look what I've created! <laughs> this same process has been repeated over the eons, generation after generation. It is in our blood and in our souls as humans. And it somehow has a way of making you feel at one with yourself and in tune with your surroundings. You weren't expecting it, but you blinked and you were there, thin space, where all the horizons of your life align expand and collide in instant clarity. The thin space is that moment in time that we are all searching for. It's when the natural world briefly intersects with the supernatural and everything becomes like a zen-like state. And in Chub K, after a long day of catching lobsters and harvesting hogfish for dinner, I got to go to a completely abandoned island, a remote beach, and cook these fish and these lobsters on a campfire made out of driftwood that I collected myself, and eat fish and lobster that I harvested right there from the ocean fresh, and watched a beautiful, absolutely epic sunset. There is nothing like it on Earth.
Discovering Water is brought to you by Gulfstream Yachts. Another great thing about Chub K Resort is its close proximity to so many other Bahama Islands and all of the adventures that lie within them. Did I mention there were sharks in the Bahamas? Island hopping is a great way to experience the varied cultures here and meet up with some of the locals. But when you're feeding one of their pet stingrays and a giant ocean-run Caribbean reef shark shows up out of nowhere, you can either run or stand your ground. Just make sure you come back with all your digits. Yowza. With nearly 700 islands in the Bahamas, there's an incredible array of adventure to be had both above and below the waves. We brought along some brand new toys called Sea Bobs to help speed up the process. <laughs> Having your own underwater jet propulsion system is almost surreal. It's no wonder why dolphins seem so happy all the time. But there is one signature adventure here that we are not about to miss out on. In fact, there are hundreds of these things scattered around throughout the Bahamas, each one with its own signature characteristics. Some are hidden while others are right out in the open. This particular one is up a steep limestone cliff through a secret passage. You would never even know it's there. I'm talking about the legendary Blue Holes of the Bahamas. While it might look like a meteor crater or some kind of weird freshwater lake, they are none of the above and many are actually saltier than the ocean. Let's test that out, shall we? These incredible anomalies in the limestone were created eons ago when ocean levels were much lower. Rainwater and its slight acidity ate away at the limestone and created underground caverns. Eventually, these caverns could no longer support the weight of their own roof and collapsed in on themselves. Once sea levels began to rise as they are now, salt water made its way into the collapsed cavern and a blue hole was born. This particular blue hole is indirectly connected to the ocean via a network of underground cracks that snake underneath the island. A handful of small and medium sized fish and even a few sea turtles made it through the caverns underneath the island and into this magical place. Where the entrance to the ocean is, is still a mystery and a closely guarded secret known only to the sea turtles and the fish who made the trek. Dude, what a spot, huh? <laughs> nice, man. Discovering Water is brought to you by Gulfstream Yachts. To anyone who loves being in or around the ocean, the Bahamas are a virtual underwater wonderland. With countless limestone pinnacles, nooks and crannies, and cracks and crevices in the coral reefs that allow currents to flow between islands, there is an unbelievable array of sea life here. This ecosystem is still relatively pure and due to careful conservation measures is thriving. The level of purity is enchanting 
and it calls to the souls of any who have laid eyes on this incredibly beautiful place. All right, Mr. Cam, let's go see what else we can find down there, huh? Yeah, another like, lobster hole, maybe yeah. some groupers. Ooh, looks like a nice spot. That's right. Going in. You see, it's very simple. Clean water means healthier corals. And based on the fact that the majority of sea life species utilize coral reefs during at least some portion of their lifespan, the healthier the coral is, the more underwater wildlife it can sustain. For instance, in other regions, it's extremely rare to find a full-grown six-pound spiny lobster in a hole that's so shallow it's nearly dry at low tide. But not here in the Bahamas. It's more important now than ever to make sure that we're not taking more from nature than we need. There's not a more sustainable method of fishing than pole spearing, where you have to swim down and hunt on a single breath of your own air. Identify a target species that's just within the right size range, then actually get close enough to it to make a good shot. It is always a challenge. That is, unless you're Cam Kirkconnell. Dude, what a spot, huh? <laughs> nice, man. Average size, like five, six pounds here. It's crazy. It's Look at that. That's awesome. All right. <laughs> man, look at the size of those bad boys, huh? It's crazy. And that one right there was in waist deep water. That big one. It's nuts. Oh, yeah. I like it. Gosh. There were like three or four big cooperas in there. There were mutton swimming by, reef shark, saw a permit. The permit was all over me, dude. If you can go lay down, usually yeah, everything's so curious, yeah. they'll come like right up to you. Yeah. Dude, that's a heck of a hole. Yeah. <laughs> Their last day comes to a close. Thoughts of crossing the stream back to the States. Thoughts of lessons learned. It's not a meal cooked over sticks along the beach, but a feast all the same. Fresh, healthy, and delicious ingredients enjoyed underneath a beautiful sunset with great friends and good company. That is what life is all about. That's because it's delicious to the soul. <laughs>